we can start today. Good afternoon. I'm Professor Giovanni Turchini, the head of School of Agriculture and Food. And it is my pleasure today to welcome you to the final Dean's Research Seminar for 2022. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land I am on today, the Wurundjeri people, as well as the traditional owners of the land you are situated on. And I acknowledge the indigenous Australian have been custodian of the lands and waterways of Australia for thousands of years. I pay my respect to the elders past and present. And also I like to, I always like to learn about uh, our, our traditional owners and the, learning about the season. And as you might know, there are many more seasons according to the traditional, the Wurundjeri. And now we are in Gunyang season. Gunyang is the kangaroo apple which is part of the family of the solanaceae, so similar to tomato, eggplants, and capsicum. And apparently, kangaroo apple are also edible and quite good, but only when they are nice and red and fully ripe, so don't eat them when they are too early. Anyway, it, we are in Gunyan season, which is summertime, not really from the look outside my window, but let's enjoy the, the, the season coming. Today is a very special day because we have Professor Timothy Reeves from the School of Agriculture and Food and will present uh, the Dean Lectures with the title of Working and Living at the Duke Campus, Research, Learning, Teaching and Engagement. Many of you might know very well Tim and his career spans across decades and continents and it will be very difficult for me to summarize them a lot. And also we asked him to provide a little summary of his career. So I don't want to be redundant. But I just say a few things about Tim. Tim has been a director general for the International Mice and Wheat Improvement Center, CIMIT. He's been a member of the UN Millennium Project Task Force on Hunger. And also he's been a senior expert with FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, working on sustainable intensification of smallholder agriculture, all very impressive activities among several others. And in his career also he had an impressive accolades of awards and recognition. And I just named a few now. In 2016, the University of Melbourne awarded team a doctor in agriculture science honoris causa, which is quite impressive. I think it's the highest uh, title that can be awarded by the university. In 2017, team was awarded the prestigious Professor C.M. Donald Medal, for lifetime achievement from the Agronomy Society of Australia. And more recently, this year, team has been appointed as a member of the Order of Australia for his significant service of, to sustainable agriculture research and production. Team commenced working with us in 2018 with the role of professor in residence at the Duke campus. And we are very honored to have him here today to present his thoughts and he, on his experience working and living at Duke campus. In terms of uh, housekeeping, uh, now, if you have any question for Tim, please put it in the box underneath, Q&A box, and then at the end of the team presentation, we're going to try to answer as many questions as possible. So now I leave the stage to Tim. Welcome, Tim, and looking forward to hear your presentation. Thanks very much, Giovanni, um, and good afternoon. Um, colleagues, friends, and guests. I'm going to uh, share my screen and uh, use a PowerPoint for my, uh, for my presentation. Um, the, it is a, a great pleasure for me um, uh, to be talking about working and living at Dukey campus. And, uh, and, and I'm going to do it in the context of, of all the things that we normally associate um, with uh, academic life and, and, and there uh, in my title slide. Um, the, as uh, Gio said, I've had a very fortunate career. Um, I've been Director General of, uh, of, of CIMIT in Mexico. And uh, when I went back for a reunion of that, the 50th anniversary of CIMIT um, in 2016, it was estimated that CIMIT's work had saved a billion lives in terms through its contributions to, to global food and nutritional security. Um, and so, you know, arguably, certainly the highlight of my life there, having the late, great Dr. Norman Borlaug, Nobel Peace Laureate, as my emeritus advisor, um, 
and you know the welcome that I got from Norman when I was first appointed um, Director General is still one of the, the highlights of, of my life. Um, and as Gio also said, had the uh, the privilege of working with uh, Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations, um, and something again which I really enjoyed. And and in you know when I was at Summit and in other roles, I met um, presidents, prime ministers, countless ministers, princes, um, a pope, a, a, and now a king. Um, as you can see from this photo uh, here, when I was invited to a round table on sustainable agriculture at St. James's Palace. So in a very fortunate life, but you know, I also put right at the top of that, all of the amazing farmers that I have met around the world, um, doing, taking up technologies, showing others um, how things can be done, and really at that forefront of scientists and farmers working together, which is absolutely critical um, to progress. But when I finished all that, and I was back in Australia in 2017, I got invited to uh, Dookie Day, uh, Dookie Open Day, my wife and I, and um, here we are in 2017, and hearing from um, our, our Dean at the time, Professor John Fazakili, what the university had in mind for really building up a Dookie campus. And um, my wife was heard to exclaim, well, uh, Professor Fazakli, I think that, that Tim, you know, might be able to help uh, you in this regard. And um, a year later, I was appointed as the first professor in residence um, at the Dookie campus of the University of Melbourne. And there have been, of course, a lot of professors who visited and, uh, and and gone up for you know days at a time to Dookie, but never a, a professor in residence. And so my charge from the Dean was to be um, uh, mentoring and supporting the uh, younger academic staff, um, to be mentoring the postgraduate students, uh, to do some teaching and to, to engage with the community. And I'll talk a, a little about all of these things during this presentation. And I guess, you know, being at Dookie is, it's a very unique experience. Um, the oldest agricultural college in Victoria, the second oldest in, in Australia, and I, I've also worked at the oldest at Roseworthy. And, and here at, at Dookie, having this campus with its own commercial farm set in the heart of regional Victoria, um, close to the Golden Valley, you know, is a, a, an amazing resource um, if you're in the world of agriculture. And so I want to sort of talk about my experience at, uh, as professor in residence at Dookie over, uh, since 2018, under those categories of research, learning and teaching, engagement, the things that we, we judge academic performance by, but also then just sharing with you about career development and progression at, at Dookie and, and the experience of, of living on campus. Um, and I think it's, it, you know, I'm, I was very really keen to do this because I had little idea what it would be like, uh, all of these things here. And, um, and I've been very, very pleasantly surprised. And so hopefully um, you will be as well. So let me just start off by saying, well, you know, what does Dookie Campus aspire to be? Well, we aspire to be the leading regionally based institution for teaching and applied research in sustainable agricultural production and agri-food systems. Um, and as I mentioned, the, the great resource of the Dookie Campus is having our own commercial farm with crops, um, uh, conservation agriculture, but also livestock, um, natural resources. Um, and this campus is set in, you know, a major farming area in Northern Victoria, a great place to be. You see on the horizon there, the, uh, the Victorian Alps, the snow on Mount Buller, and it's just an amazingly um, good campus for agriculture and an amazingly um, pleasant campus to be on. Um, 
and as I said before, you know, one of the advantages is it's a very hands-on campus. And even if you're a 70 odd year old um, a professor in residence, you can get to take your own soil samples um, out in the paddock when it's 35 in the water bag. So um, lots of experiences to uh, share with you. So let me start on that first category of research. Research here at Dookie campus is all under this sort of chapeau umbrella of sustainable intensification of agriculture, agri-food systems. Um, we've got significant work on drought resilient and climate adapted farming systems. Um, we've got research on heat and drought stress in both livestock, um, cattle um, and sheep uh, and crops. Um, looking at, at feed-based systems, livestock nutrition, um, had a big program here of microwave technologies for agriculture, and including non-chemical control of weeds, for example, and also um, some research in relation to winemaking, um, where we certainly have um, some capacity. Now, when you think of perhaps research at a regional campus, you might think, ah, oh, well, you know, um, I wonder how you can really progress it. Well, I've just put a few figures here for you and, and pointing out that in terms of research performance, on average here in my time here, we've had five research active staff. Uh, but over that period, um, 2018 for now, and we've gained nearly $20 million of competitive grants uh, for research. Um, our researchers have been prolific in terms of their publications of peer-reviewed journals, book chapters, conference proceedings, two patents filed um, from research being done here. Um, had uh, a number of um, uh, higher degree, it should be HDR, not IGLD, higher degree by research scholars. Um, 17 uh, PhD students, quite a number of master's students and, and some honours students. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about um, postgraduate scholars um, in a second. And one of the other things is, again, in my time here, we've really gained some good um, research facilities, glass houses, um, climate chambers um, in the animal house, some additional winery equipment, um, laboratory upgrades, both uh, teaching and um, research. And we have the university's first GM wheat site um, here on the campus, working in cooperation with um, Alex Johnson in, in, in biosciences. So by any measure, the research performance of Dookie in uh, the time that I've been here has been absolutely outstanding and certainly at the forefront. Um, if I look at current project highlights, we've got about um, $16 million worth of, of competitive um, grant research activity going on right at the top of that pile of Victorian drought and innovation hub. Um, absolutely critical where we're working with five farming groups, farming industry groups across Victoria and three other universities, um, Deakin, um, Federation, La Trobe, uh, and also Agriculture Victoria. And so there is Dookie Campus, right the headquarters of that major um, uh, hub, innovation hub, right across Victoria and part of a, a, a national um, network array of hubs. Um, uh, Doran, uh, Dr. Doran, Go Associate Professor uh, Doran Gupta, um, has a major innovation grant from the Future Drought Fund on diversified farming. Um, also, um, uh, she's leading an ACR grant on sustainable intensification of agriculture in Pacific Island countries. And then we've got another one of other grants uh, led by Dr. Paul Jang, by um, Dr. Sarinda Chauhan um, on various other aspects. So, Right at the moment, um, $16 million worth of externally funded um, research and related activities are going on at the campus. I mentioned um, postgraduate uh, scholars. All of the, the scholars who uh, study here 
um, are conducting research relevant to sustainable intensification of agriculture in one way or the other. Um, one of the features of those who do their um, uh, PhDs, particularly here, is that they have components of their research in the laboratory, they have components in the glasshouse or the animal house, they have components in the field, in the paddock, and also some genomic studies as, as this. So this really gives them a broad experience and understanding and really sets them up um, for what they may do next. Uh, the other important feature, it's like a lot of the things here at Dukey, but most of the postgraduate scholars live on campus, just totally connected, all integrally involved in campus life, researching, supporting each other, engagement, um, when we have VIP visitors, always great to have postgrads readily available to be able to go and engage with uh, those visitors or scientific visitors. And the, I suppose the thing that struck me, and you know, I, I've been at, at other institutions, other universities uh, where we've had postgraduates, of course, but what I've noted at Dukey is the wonderful collegiality between the whole group and in study and social activities and between the whole group and, and others on, on the campus. And one of the things that, you know, that um, I have tried to achieve working with all of their supervisors while I've been here is to highlight um, the collective efforts. And so we ran a, a, a research uh, day, a research workshop, uh, for our postgraduate scholars. It was, you know, the first for quite some time and certainly the first one done just at the, uh, at the Dukey campus level. Um, but as I said, it, you know, it's partly about getting together research-wise, driving um, that innovation, driving those efforts, but also um, of supporting the collegiality of the postgraduates. And so my wife, Patricia, who's in the, in the front there, and I have you know, put um, many pleasant evenings in um, by entertaining our postgraduate scholars and my wife here giving them a lesson in how to do uh, La, La Macarena, um, and uh, including a visiting Chinese professor who was quite uh, proficient at it. But I think these photos give you an idea of how tightly knit the postgraduate scholars are here on the campus. And we've made you know, many efforts to have dinners, to have activities, um, to get them all sharing and learning from each other, which is as important as, you know, having your head down in your, uh, your own subjects. So, so much for research. Let me move on to um, learning and teaching. Um, and I think this is one of the outstanding attributes of Dukey campus um face-to-face -face classroom learning um learning studying working living and socializing together so our undergraduate students the vast majority of them living on the place and they have all that sort of uh, other interactions rather than just meeting from time to time in the lecture room um the engagement with the opportunities for engagement with agribusiness with industry and um, farm engagement here on, on the Dukey farm itself. And, and just, you know, going back to that agribusiness industry engagement, you know, generalizing to make the point, in, in semester time, there's a sort of a bus leaves <laughs> the front of the campus here, taking the students somewhere, you know, virtually on a weekly basis. And they can be going to a, um, a cutting edge um, horticultural uh, operation, they could be going to a, a Wagyu beef stud, they be, could be going to a winery, they could be going to um, uh, protected agriculture, etc. So it's that opportunity to engage with industry and agribusiness that's a real feature of undergraduate learning and teaching um, here at the campus. And the other thing is, of course, that, you know, um, a smaller campus, we've got quite a number of staff living on the place as well as postgraduate students and all of the undergraduate students. And so you've got that, that staff availability of, of just about always being here. But as I 
you know, emphasized, it's this opportunity for the undergraduate students to have these real interactions with commercial farmers. And it's a cropping uh, trip here, um, a cold winter's day, but, you know, students getting the opportunity to see the equipment, to see the paddocks, to talk to the farmers, to know, you know, what's making them tick. And it's, it's a wonderful opportunity for the students. Um, I, I asked um, Roz, our uh, goal, our associate, the Dean of Learning and Teaching, just to give me some of the numbers uh, here at Dukey. And, you know, over that five year period I've been here, we had about 500 students here learning on campus, would have been higher, but for of course the disruptions of COVID in, um, in uh, 2020. Um, and so you can see it's, you know, it, it's a lively place. And the, the, you know, the last time, as I say, that we sort of had a um, um, opportunity to have everyone on campus, you looking at undergraduate students and our postgraduates, you know, around about 150 students on campus. So it really is a thriving learning and teaching campus. Three courses, the Diploma in General Studies, the DIGS, the second semester of uh, the Bachelor of Ag in second year and the second semester of the Bachelor of Ag in third year. And uh, all those students socializing uh, together and again, learning from each other. We add to those um, coursework, the intensive subjects, which are studied at Dukey campus, those numbers, you know, go up again, a very busy time, those intensives um, over that that uh, five year period, the numbers are there. There are um, Rosgall sustainable food subject, 280 um, students here studying for that. Uh, uh, Dr. Gayathri Mekela's irrigation and water management, and about 360 um, have studied that here on the campus. And then the wine related courses run by uh, Chris Barnes um, um, are really popular near well 950 um, uh, uh, students there and so another 1600 students have been on campus doing these intensives and again it's that opportunity for them to interact and and, and find out you know what wine production is about and what irrigated farms look like um, and what sustainable farms look like so um, very uh, important location, a tremendous opportunity for students um, for learning and teaching here at Canvas. And it's this ability to get out in the paddocks to see what does canola look like, not just above the ground, which you can see perhaps when you drive past, but what the root systems look like and what the phenological development looks like and, and a whole range of other things that um, the students are just readily able to do. Uh, when they're here on campus. Uh, let me look at that third pillar of um, academic performance, um, engagement, um, which is really important, whether it be with farmers, schools, community groups, other scientific groups. And one of the things that I have concentrated on in my time when I've been here is engaging with the farming community. And Quite a bit of this off and on the campus and hasn't always been just me of course uh, colleagues uh, as well and um but certainly in the meetings which um i've spoken at you know um in those uh, before covid struck you know about a dozen meetings over a thousand farmers there um and also um sort of continued that post covid now with speaking to land care groups rotary a whole range of others so that's really important. If you're going to have an agricultural campus, you've got to have that connection um, with the farming, with the rural community. And, and the second aspect of this engagement, and, um, and, and Karen Edwards has been, you know, very much uh, active in this space, are interactions with schools. And, and so each year, there have been around 200 students coming to the place, school students coming for the Food and Fiber Careers Day. Um, and we have the VCAL students um, from Shepparton, uh, Indigenous students, um, 
looking at uh, work-related spills in relation, including bush tucker. And we, we've got the, the Doran uh, uh, Gupta has the garden here with native um, plants and crops in it, which are featuring in that uh, teaching. And then another initiative um, which uh, I got going was Ag Science in Action Days, of getting those students in years 10, 11, um, and 12 saying, look, if you're doing science at school, why don't you think about doing ag science when you go to university and getting a whole lot of practitioners in to talk to those, uh, to those students. Um, our engagement with communities. Well, the, the drought hub, obviously working with the, the farming groups um, is an excellent example of how we're engaging with rural communities right across right across the um the state uh, and certainly around uh, around here at Duke as well um one of the initiatives that i got going also with the media was to write the dookie diary for uh, the shepparton uh, media and uh, just as a means of you know just keeping up today hey this is what's happening here at dookie and, and the last aspect of that engagement is that i've mentioned before the engagement with the industry visits here collaborations um with uh, industry groups collaborations obviously with uh, research groups and you know we've been very vibrant in that area and um dr paul cheng with the dairy industry you know he's just one of the examples of that obviously chris barnes with the the wine industry um and uh you know it's certainly a real place for engagement outside and of course inside um, the university and to be able to get those year 10 11 12 uh, students on campus and saying look these are the things that you could be thinking about if you choose and uh, to study agriculture um when you uh when you graduate, when you go to university, and um, exposing them to some of the, you know, the newer sort of technologies. In this case, it was drone technology, and those um, those students, you know, just seeing how drones, how remote sensing um, is used in agriculture, because that sort of uh, that sort of technology is something that they readily uh, relate to, and um, of course, you know it's those those years 11 and 12 they are the future and we need to get as many of them into our um uh our degree courses and studying agriculture um as we can um one of the most recent examples of um a um engagement with the community was our first farmer field day for a very very long time um on on the campus and this was particularly featuring uh, um associate professor doran gupta's innovation grant more drought resilient systems um and um the uh, but but also uh, some of the work of professor james hunt who came up from uh, parkville uh, for his work on nitrogen banks uh, in canola and it, and it was a really great opportunity back for us to have this farmer field day on the place, the first, as I say, for um, a, a very long time. So having talked about those sort of pillars of, of academic um, uh, life, research, learning and teaching, engagement, one of the other things that I want to share with you is, you know, I guess it's a fear of, of all of us, you know, if you're going to a campus that's not at the main campus of the university, it's a regionally based campus, you know, will I be able to develop my career? Will I be able to progress my career? And I can say unequivocally a resounding yes, full uh, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. When I came here in 2018, uh, one professor, me, <laughs> There were two senior lecturers, four lecturer B and, and three lecturer A um, here on campus. Um, since 2018, all those academic staff have been promoted and promoted and able to remain here at Dookie. So 
as we speak now, with two professors on, uh, on campus, two associate professors, five senior lecturers, three lecturers B. And so anyone that thinks, well, oh, I go to Duke, you know, uh, will I be able to be research active? Well, you've seen the performance in relation to grants. Will I be able to be productive? You've seen the performance in relation to publications. And um, will I be able to develop my career? Um, here is the proof that you can certainly do all of those things. And as, uh, as Gio mentioned uh, at the start, those have been uh, pretty good for me too. And uh, the Donald Medal, the Farrah Medal and, and the Order of Australia. So um, it's certainly a place that you can um, progress your career um, significantly and they'd be doing some really worthwhile uh, work. Now, the, the last category is um, living on Dookie campus. Um, my wife and I um, lived on the campus because if you're going to be the professor in residence, it actually means just that. <laughs> you, uh, you need to be in residence and all the things that that um, generates and that means. So although my position has been largely part-time, um, although full-time for 12 months, we've actually spent the majority of the time here at Dookie. And, and that's really important because it means you're always there for mentoring, you're always there um, um, for support, and that was very, very important during the dark days of COVID, but um, always important when you've got, um, you've got postgraduate scholars whose families are overseas, when you've got um, indeed um, even staff who, uh, whose families may well be overseas and particularly during those trying times. And then, and then there are the sort of the small intangibles of um, we make sure that we do our shopping in the local community. Violet Town's one that we have and, and Dookie itself. And, you know, just making sure that um, wearing the, the Dookie um, uh, clothing and just that connection to, oh now, yeah, here's someone that comes to here and regularly support, supports our small community and, and comes from the Dookie campus. So there's all of those things about living on campus that really add to the professional and academic things that you know we're um, seeking to achieve. Um, living on campus, you have to have a house. Now, I wouldn't like uh, any of you to think that um, uh, I had the most. Uh, we had the most luxurious house um, on the campus. Um, um, it was a bit like um, going back to old times for me, living in a, a seven, you know, a seventy odd year old weatherboard house with um, uh, not uh, too many home comforts in it. And when we took, when I came, it looked like that. And um, the garden was um, uh, an absolute wreck with dead trees and a whole lot of weeds and a whole range of uh, things. And um, and the house was um, certainly livable, but um, I think we made it very much into a home um, uh, over the, the years we have been here. Um, I first of all sort of uh, got up and tidied the garden and uh, well, it, uh, looked a it looks a lot better in that picture than it did when we started. But um, and then in those ensuing years, I've turned it from that into this, into this and into this. And I think it's one of the lessons that I've learned in, in my long career that, you know, you should never be just passing time, never saying, well, look, oh, this is only a rental house. I've only got it here for this job. Why, why would I bother to uh, do anything? Why would I bother to, you know, um, uh, really care about it? Well, um, <laughs> You never know. This might be this might be the last time you get the opportunity. So making the most of every day, every week, every month, every year um, is absolutely critical. Rather than oh look, I'm at Dookie campus, but you know I'm planning I'm planning to, to be moving off at some stage, etc. And um, and so this um, 
That's not only obviously given my wife and I great joy, but we've had tremendous feedback from undergraduate students, from postgraduate scholars, um, from staff, from the staff of the primary school, from the staff of the special school on the campus um, about how much they've appreciated walking past the garden and seeing um, obviously the, the vegetation, the new plants, nearly all of them natives, but all of the things that those natives, those, those plants have generated. And so I've had the privilege of seeing this little fellow every morning um, when I'm having my morning cup of tea and looking out the window. And that's a privilege in itself. But um, when they then breathe in the garden and bring the young ones uh, into that um, same position, I think it's a, a, an additional joy. And, um, and so counted about 43 different species of bird in the garden and uh, some of them just over the garden. Not gonna get the, um, uh, this one in the garden, but there you can see going over and now you can see why it's called a, a wedge-tailed eagle. Um, a great, but it's not just been birds, fantastic um, uh, native wildlife attracted into the garden. Um, this this has a sort of bit of a special place this one here because it was during covid i was lecturing um to the undergraduate students and um sitting right where i'm sitting now and i looked out the window and i saw this magnificent creature crawling just in the garden there so i said to the students uh, just a one minute students bang went off took a photo of it then showed the photo of it to them and just saying look i, I just spotted this and um and of course, everyone was locked down during COVID, mainly in Melbourne, and just actually lit up their days a little bit to, uh, to see this. But I'll say this is, you know, part of the spin-offs of, of, of living uh, on campus. So I'm going to conclude in this final section now about some thoughts on looking forward a roadmap for Dukey campus. And I see some significant opportunities. Um, and I've put here the gateway to farming and regional community. When I was recruited at the University of Adelaide, uh, the Dean at the time there, Professor Harold Woolhouse, um, uh, was telling me about all of the, um, you know, the, the great academic performance that he recruited to the Wake campus, etc. And, and I said to him, uh, look, I'm, I'm none of those things, Harold. And he said, no, exactly. He said, um, you know, you're going to be the professor of agronomy and farming systems at Roseworthy because you can't have a faculty of agriculture or indeed a school of agriculture and food that does not have a gateway to the farming and regional community. You can't be a capital-based university professing to be in agriculture if you don't have that gateway. And Dookie is the ideal gateway to the farming and regional community. And I think, you know, with the, um, what we've done with the drought hub, what we've done with many other things, just proving that all of the schools liaison, um, all of that engagement with community activities, um, certainly um, is a, you know, a, a really important opportunity that we need to build on and build on in relation to the campus and its role. Um, and so, and, and this applies, in, you know, for learning, for teaching and, and for research. In relation to learning and teaching, um, I think we have the opportunity to build on the strong, established and proven foundations that um, here at Duke It's not an experiment. We already know these things work. The face-to-face -face learning experience. Um, we know that's an increasing struggle as we've um, co you know, particularly exacerbated by COVID. But, and, and, and obviously, everywhere is affected by it. But I have to say, in all of the classes that I've taught, that if we were 40 students enrolled for that subject, you know, 38 of them are sitting there in the lecture room in front of you. And we need to be able to build on that to um, offer this real option to, uh, to our students. Um, the collegial support that we can provide, the social enjoyment, the engagement um, for students 
who are studying, living, working, playing together um, here on and socialising uh, on the one campus. This is something I believe is a real opportunity uh, for the university to build on. Um, something I would like to see added, and I've certainly raised this idea a few times, um, and it reflects global contemporary best practice for a regional campus, and that is to have a teaching farm. You know, a series of around 22 hectare farmlets with different crops, forages, livestock, viticulture, horticulture, different soil treatments, different systems that are readily there. So you get a student that comes and says, oh, look, I'm, you know, I'm interested in industrial hemp. You've got your know, small plot of, you know, farm bed of industrial hemp that they can immediately work on. You've got someone that's interested in soil biology. Well, we've already generated some real differences here, you know, with these farming practices, etc. I've got someone interested in beef cattle. We don't have them commercially on the farm, but we've got them in our, our farmlets. And so I think this will provide an absolute cutting edge um, opportunity to enhance our, our learning and teaching experiences if we can establish a teaching farm uh, here on the place. Also, what, continuing with, with undergraduate learning and teaching, I think we've got to provide more options for our students in this new world. As some of you will know, currently Duke is only an option for the second semester of the Bachelor of Ag in years two and three. Um, and, and that year three one really only came because the first students that came for the second semester of year two said, we want to come back next year. And, and the, the dean granted that. But um, really, these are quite dysfunctional options because a student who does a semester in Parkville, they've got a rent a place, you know, quite often got a rent a place accommodation in uh, Melbourne and then break that halfway through to come up here. And so we really need to actually design some real options that will suit our students a bit better. I, I've got three options there. You can have one of all three years at Dookie Campus. Um, you know, uh, another year one at Parkville and two years two and three at Dookie Campus, or of course you can do all three years at, at Parkville. Um, but I think we need some strategic um, thinking into how best to make the use of this magnificent facility here in relation to learning and teaching and to make it easier uh, for students to, um, to take those options. Um, and to do that, we're going to need improved transport. Um, I think it's the University of Melbourne responsibility to provide this transport. Certainly the University of Adelaide uh, does it now, including for its Roseworthy campus. And, and there are many options to do this for delivery, including shuttles to public transport. I mean, it doesn't have to be a standalone system, but certainly something that when you've got a, a magnificent regional campus like this, you've actually got transport to help students and you've got accommodation. <laughs> what happens at the moment when we get um, over full with visits of um, all the year one students, for example, from Parkville, is that um, our students have to do some glamping because we don't have the, uh, the um, accommodation here. Now with the new accommodation block, um, uh, $20 million, uh, that will certainly help. But I think we really need to, again, be enhancing the accommodation on the place because I believe we can generate um, more uh, student numbers in relation to um, uh, undergraduate courses and not just in agriculture and food, but even broader in relation to our new placement in the science uh, faculty. Both uh, teaching, but I'm sort of moving more now into research. The campus really offers this opportunity for the school, for the faculty of being a field laboratory uh, for agriculture, for ecosystem work, for agroforestry and related areas, landscapes, the magnificent um, bush reserve here, nearly 300 hectares of bush reserve which is a tremendous resource, which we underutilized at the moment for work on water, 
engagement with indigenous populations, perhaps around indigenous plants and crops, that, that the Dookie campus really is this field laboratory and we need to be equipped um, to be able to carry out this role, more equipment in relation to um, managing controlled environment out in the out in the paddocks, out in the field, um, instrumentation of uh, of key sites, and it's a real opportunity that I see that we can build on the tremendous momentum we've got um, going at, at Dukey at the moment. Um, some of you will know that I've been a, a proponent in my time here of establishing the Dookie Sustainable Agricultural Intensification Research Platform, a world leading research platform and quantifiable metrics and the comparative sustainability performance of each system, um, including obviously carbon fluxes, but a whole range of things that can swing from that. It will be a rich research and teaching facility um, for many, for industry, for postgraduate scholars, for undergraduates, uh, for our own academic staff, and um, for visiting uh, scientists. And in, in terms of achieving all of this, we need to um, accomplish what uh, uh, Dr. Davi Rafaela and myself have been calling Dookie Digital, and um, connecting this um, magnificent campus um, digitally for a whole range of research and teaching purposes, for real connectivity um, to obviously the Parkville to Melbourne Connect to you know, some of the things that we have running um, um, uh, from the campus. And so that would really set up uh, the campus for the future in both research and teaching, the accomplishment and, um, of, uh, of, of Dookie Digital. And I'm finishing here, uh, Geo, with some acknowledgements. Um, um, and the first one I want to acknowledge is my magnificent wife, Patricia Lopez, because you don't come as professor in residence at Dookie campus without an extremely supportive wife. And Patricia has not only supported me, but you know, she has become a sort of a, a mother figure to the postgraduate um, scholars, for example. And the greatest compliment I can give her is that you know, I'll land up on campus, I'll go in the building, I'll see one of the, uh, the postgrads, and the first thing they'll say to me is, is Patricia with you? <laughs> so, no, not like, hi, great to see you, Ken. Is Patricia with you? And, um, and so thank you very much, uh, Patricia, for your magnificent uh, support right the way through. Um, I want to acknowledge uh, Professor John Fazakali, the dean at the time, who provided me with the opportunity to be the professor in residence at Dookie campus. Thank you, John, for your confidence uh, in me and, um, and hopefully uh, you will have seen that return. And also my great thanks to our campus director, Associate Professor Roz Gore. Roz is the foundation stone of this campus. She's been here quite some time, a lot longer than me. She has tremendous rapport with the students, tremendous rapport with the staff, tremendous rapport with the local communities. And um, it's been an absolute pleasure to work with you, Roz. And what I appreciate greatest is all of you, you've really facilitated my role. You've supported me in everything that I've tried to do as professor in residence. Thank you very much indeed. And my last is the team here. A team dookie says it all. I worked at a lot of places, as Gio said, um, but um, I've never worked with a more collegiate team than we have here at Dookie Canvas. Everyone works hard, everyone works for each other, and, and we really are a happy campus. We've got great professional staff on campus. They outstanding, they've been fundamental to this takeoff of Dookie campus that we've seen in, in, the, in recent years. They live up to their name of professional staff. Thank you to all of you. Academic staff, already given some coverage to my academic colleagues, excellent in everything they do, teaching, research, credit to themselves, the families, the campus, the faculty, the university. And as you saw on a per capita basis, their publication rates and their winning 
uh, competitive grants are right at the front of the pack. So, and of course, your promotions speak for themselves, very well deserved because of those other things. Postgraduate scholars, absolute pleasure to work with you. Enjoyed helping you all. And those very first days when we got together in my office, sort of many interactions, and including during the dark days of lockdown, and we Zoomed regularly, and, and we even had a couple of spaced outside little gatherings here to keep everyone's spirit up. And undergraduate students, pleasure to teach and mentor. And as I say, you know, there's it, a real joy. You're walking past, and you walk past a group of students, up go their heads. Good day, Tim. How are you? I mean, these are the future. They're the outstanding young people um, who are the future. It's been a great pleasure to work with you. So I'm going to uh, finish there, Gio, just to thank you, uh, Gio, for your support when you come into the new role of the head of the school and, um, and to um, say I'm very happy that I'm going to be continuing as an honorary um, um, in the school. And but um, thank you for the opportunity. And I've certainly enjoyed it. And hopefully everyone else has. Thank you. Wonderful. Thanks, team. I'm clapping. I, I'm sure that also all the others participants are clapping right now. See, I can see claps coming. Thank you. This was a fantastic seminar. Uh, I really, really, really like the passion, the, the commitment, the energy you put in everything you do. I think you are contagious, and that's very good. That's certainly part of making sure that Duke is the happy campus, and you contributed a lot to that. So thank you for that. And I look forward to keep working with you. Yes, as an honorary, but still you are part of the happy campus and the happy family. Uh, I'd like to open to question. We have a couple at the moment. If anybody else has question, please, this is the time to put it in the list. And just one comment from Stuart. Barb, I also say that you need to include also the vet student that were able to do some intensive that um, was before COVID. And we look forward to have more vet students in the future to, to do some work on large animals. Then we have a question from James Hunt, which is actually what I was thinking in my mind. And James, quicker than me, and just put that there. How do you think the university could further draw the amount of fields research happening of Duke to achieve the aim of making it a national center for applied field research and what restriction are there also what further resources are required you will touch on this but if you want to give a little bit more would we'll be appreciated yeah very good first of all apologies Stuart um Barbara <laughs> and uh, my error um going to uh James is really good question um the we've got a unique opportunity here to be, as I say, a, uh, um, a field laboratory um, where, I mean, we've got a small example of that at the moment with the GM wheat site here, for example, but we can be doing so much more that we need the equipment, we need the instrumentation, we need the support, both in terms of equipment and in terms of um, research support staff to be doing that because I can see that, um, that we really can become a major center in terms of applied field research. We're not seeking to, you know, to um, duplicate what's going on in biosciences or you know, elsewhere. Obviously, we have our, uh, a smaller molecular lab, but it's this opportunity to have um, controlled environment facilities in relation to water, to heat, to rainfall, um, um, et cetera, which is absolutely critical. Um, we need, and this is tied up, you need to have the accommodation for those people. We've already, we're starting on that now. Um, and it's, you know, really some resourcing. And we're not talking about huge amounts of money. Um, you know, um, we're talking about, um, in terms of, of some of that initial equipment, you, you know, you're probably talking about a million dollars. I know, you know, it, it might sound a lot, but I mean, it's not, you know, it's not huge in, in, in the uh, scheme of things. And then that obviously could 
over a period of time get up into that range of you know 10 or so million dollars if you're talking about the sustainable ag intensification research platform which i i think has got you know tremendous scope um but um we're primed for takeoff we're demonstrating we even with the resources we've got at the moment that we can raise 15 or 16 million dollars of, of competitive grants you know we can do so much more with a coordinated approach to equipping the place to be the living laboratory the field research um, um, uh, site thanks team we also have a, a question now from lindsay and just going to the key point it was very interesting for me as well he's asking what do you think could be the option for attracting also students from other universities like from Latro, university of culture students to spend some time at dookie or um, from other discipline like from faculty of science now we i mean what what the opportunity what do you think are the opportunities there so first of all let me let me go to your point geo within the faculty of science you know i see some real opportunities in relation to um, um, students from our own, it'll be in large school ecosystems, uh, forestry, etc. You know, here instrumented. Um, you know, perhaps working with catchments, working with the net or native vegetation we've got on the place, working in the bush reserve whole range of, of opportunities there and obviously we've got the you know already working with biosciences in relation to the wheat site um, and you know we've got a, a small project with the, the, the um, drought hub and the maths um, uh, school in relation to looking at climate change um, uh, etc so I see a lot of opportunities there and likewise Lindsay's question that yes and um, you know we've struck up a very collegial partnership with Latrobe and with Federation um, and with Deacon around the drought hub and that's all built on trust you know and it's we don't have a top-down model for that hub we have a, a grassroots you know bottom-up model and we have co-design and co-governance so we've built a lot of trust with those three universities so um, I'd certainly see the scope, uh, Lindsay, um, to be attracting um, students uh, from those universities as well. Uh, I would add Monash to that as well, if, if appropriate. Thanks, Tim. And maybe the last question given is almost two o'clock. This is from Paul, but I will reserve to add a question at the end for you. So the second last from Paul is asking about international postgraduate students, the possibility that we have to attract international students postgraduate specifically to do it to have hands-on experience so Look, what are the limitations of the bottleneck to achieve that yeah i mean and and paul you know uh, paul cheng is a great example i mean he's uh, he, he's a wonderful supervisor of postgraduate students and those students all get to be working in the field or in the with livestock um uh, with feed base etc and, and likewise for all our postgraduate students and i think that's a great thing that we can do that the and um, particularly if those students for example going back to work in their uh, countries of origin you know we we send them back with a whole range of skills not just how to work in a very expensive laboratory you know yes you've got some of that got some in the glass house but you're also got the work in the field you've also got the work you know of, of doing very practical things and and that's what um it's you know i say to our postgrads here 50 percent of what you learn while you're here at dookie will be what's contained in your phd the other 50 percent will be learning to live in a community like this a different community learning those interactions with natural resources learning a whole range of things that you wouldn't get you know if you uh spending all of your time for example in a uh, uh an air-conditioned laboratory thanks tim and yeah just before closing a very a quick question from me and you have been traveling around the world you have seen many institutions from different continents would you do you think there is any that we can explore as an option to learn from them any similar 
university with a rural campus or farm based campus that we can go and learn from them what they are doing to see and, and bring some of their expertise back at Duke. Yes, Gio, a, a very good question. I think, you know, some of the best examples for us are the land-grant universities in the US. Um, and uh, th 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 there are several there that are, are, are very good. Um, and I'll, I'll provide the, the details of those. Um, uh, certainly there are aspects of, you know, the world's leading agricultural university, Wageningen, um, uh, that we could be following on. The teaching farm example I gave, I actually did uh, use my network to, um, uh, to get examples and the sort of what we're proposing for Duke, you know, sort of, you know, 20 or so two hectare farmlets, you know, would be right up there with contemporary best practice. So, um, but certainly um, I have made a little list of places that we could uh, look at um, to model Dookie on and um, and obviously get those to, to you and to uh, Moira. Excellent. Thank you very much. And I'd just like to read out the last comment from Stuart. As far as he's aware, Duke is the only enterprise in the world with multi-season GPS located 360 imagery through time showing pasture crop over 250,000 images available for education. That's an example of the fantastic things happening at Duke. So please join me to thank team again. And I'm, I, I close here the, the last, uh, uh, this is the last for the year, the Dean's presentation for the FPAS faculty. So I thought it was the best way to finish with team summarizing fantastic activity at Duke. So thank you, team. And have a lovely afternoon to everybody. Thanks, thank you. Bye.